near the Russian border in the Caucasus Mountains of northern Georgia. I'm on the search for food and shelter, and that means getting onto the lower slopes. Heading into dense forest, home to wolves, bears, and some of the toughest terrain this former Soviet Union Republic has to offer. It's definitely carnivore poo, this. There's only two carnivores in this forest. That's bear and wolves. It's definitely not bear. Look, you see the tapered ends to this. You can actually see what he's been feeding off. All of the hair, probably sheep, maybe goat hair. Cook it, Naya. Even though we're in the woods now, the terrain hasn't got any easier. These forests are defined by endless deep gorges with treacherous steep sided valleys. It's getting much steeper here. On top of that, the forest is cut in half by a fast snowmelt river in full torrent. A lot of water panning over that waterfall. Pretty sheer drop off that, that's a problem. I think it's all this also, it's just slick rock going down to that. I don't want to end up in that white water. It's also going to be freezing cold. We need to find another way to try and get across here. When you're in the wilds, you get used to seeing only natural forms, so any man made object will stand out like a sore thumb. Old, old looking pulley system and a bucket. Actually, these wires are in quite good, quite a good mix. Should be able to make some sort of zip wire across here. Get rid of that. The sag should arrest my slide. What I don't know is how far I'll get. And actually, you know, with a bit of rope like this, you can improvise a harness very easily. Just do a triple bowling in it. And that will act as two leg loops and a chest loop for you. A bowline harness like this is often used by Mountain Rescue because it's fast and simple to make. Make the loop. The rabbit comes out of the hole. That's how I always remember it. Around the tree and then back down the hole. And then you can literally just step into that. This bit comes over your top. And then for this bit, we'll just thread that through. OK, and then we're good to go. OK, let's go. The free ride is over. There's too much slack in the line, and I'm fighting now against my own body weight. I'm halfway across. Thing is, I'm not as far as I'd hope. I'm going to have to haul myself along this wire last bit. OK, made it across. With the river negotiated, what I need to do now is make camp. Oh, shit, you know what? This wouldn't be a good place to camp, look. Huge dead tree, puff of wind in the night, and that goes. You're not going to see daylight. And because it's a beech tree, they don't give you any warning. You don't get the They've got very short grain, so when they drop, it's just We need to keep heading higher, find somewhere else. You don't have to use scrubs. My name is what? My name is My name is Bear Grills. You, know, you actually wouldn't want to shelter in this bit. It's going to be a bit of a water catchment area. But up on this bit, it's quite level. It's about the only bit of level ground around here. Also, like, nothing above me either. OK, base camp. Let's get building. First, you need to build the main frame of the shelter. And for that, you'll need the strongest, straightest branches you can find. Then, using natural forks and crooks, arrange them to form a basic tent shape. OK, and then against that, lay loads of these. You then need to build a latticework of smaller lengths, gradually adding smaller and smaller branches. She must pile on this thinner stuff. Yeah, it's kind of almost ready for the leaves, really. need to make a fire for tonight, and there's no shortage of dead wood in this forest. Whenever you're camping out, you're going to be vulnerable. The thing is, I know there are wolves and bears in this area. There's a lot of mythology around wolves and packs of wolves attacking humans. And the reality is, if you see a wolf in the wild, you're in 
incredibly lucky. But, you know, I'm not going to take any chances tonight. I'm going to make a really simple torch. So if I do hear anything or anything comes near this camp, I've got a weapon, which is fire. And that is always going to deter predators. Just get a branch like this. Then into these gaps. I'm just going to push a lot of these birch bark shavings. I'm not going to light this unless I really need to. Just had a noise out there. Do you know what? I'm not going to take any chances with this. I'm just going to get this torch flaming. Yeah! There you go. Hear that? Sounds a very long way away, though. Okay, I'll try and get some sleep, try and slow the heart rate back down again. The morning light signals the end to what has been a long, restless night. The fire gave me a sense of security, and I've spotted something that means I can start another one at a moment's notice. Send the fungus! 좀 전까지만 해도 수줍어하던 다현이네 모습은 온데간데 없습니다. There's this soft spongy bit in the middle. What's great about this? Put a spark to it, it will burn as an ember, and it will keep burning. So it means you can travel and always have fire near at hand. The last thing I'm going to do before breaking camp is just use a bit of this tinder fungus, and all I need is that, and then just put a bit of fire to it. That will then stay lit for absolutely ages. And that's just going to slowly smolder away. All I need to do is wrap it loosely in some moss, and then I can travel with that. OK. Let's get on the move. The steep uplands have given way to flatter, marshier ground. Wetlands have a greater diversity of plant life and places to shelter. Should always be on the lookout for anything you can use. I'm catching it! Good boy, huh? Pheasant. No way I'm going to catch him. Pheasants are ground dwelling birds. It's nesting season, and this thick vegetation is a perfect place to look. Well, here's a nest and some eggs as well. You can tell the pheasant eggs are small, kind of greenish. But, you know, those are going to be good to eat. You know, I've still got that tinder fungus ember in my pack. I'm quite tempted actually just to boil these up. I mean, nicer than raw. I love a boiled egg. Okay. And this tinder fungus is still burning. And just every hour or so, I've taken it out, given it a little blow, and hopefully this will go. <laughs> God, I say it. No smoke without fire. <laughs> it's not always true. Fill this up with some water. You wouldn't drink water this dirty, but it's fine for boiling the eggs in. Okay, I'm a three and a half minute man. When it comes to boiled eggs, this is going to be just way nicer than having raw eggs. Oh no, look. That's a part developed chick fetus. Oh, it wasn't quite the nice boiled egg I was hoping for. But you're in the Philippines, this sort of thing's a delicacy. If you haven't eaten for days, you can't afford to be squeamish. Protein keeps you alive. Oh, I've got a leg. Ooh, at least it's a few minutes just to start warm up, get some energy in. And then we're back on our way. To reach the coast, you must leave this rich ecosystem behind and head out deeper into the marshes. The water is getting deeper, and walking in these reeds is now almost impossible. Button. Getting beyond funny, these holes now. Oh, hang on, what's my boot? Oh, 
OK, hang on, I need my boot. We're not going anywhere without that. Progress through the swamp has slowed to a snail's pace. It might be a haven for frogs, but if I'm honest, they can keep it. Hang on, this is crazy, crazy, crazy. The river's just here. It's just there is no bank to it. Although what there is is a lot of are these reeds. Let's just see if that. Look, these ones aren't hollow. You can't blow through these. These are little compartments that are airtight. And that means these reeds are going to be really buoyant. Just wondering whether it might be actually more efficient to try and build a raft out of loads and loads of these and try and float down the river. To be honest, anything's got to be better than, than this. OK, come on, let's commit to this. Let's gather a load of reeds. Reeds flourish in freshwater marshes like this all around the world. For years, they've been used to make boats, some capable of traveling huge distances across oceans. OK, what I want to do is split them, turn it around, and look what you end up with. The thin, tapered end here. It's fatter in the middle, where the reeds are thickest. And then tapers off here as well. You know, like everything, in survival, if you can use natural forms of things, it's going to help you so much. A short section of my rope cut into strips will hold the raft together nicely. And then what you've got is this basic shape, like this. I reckon two, two or three of these are going to give me easy enough stability and buoyancy to float me down this river. One, two, let me just finish off this third one. Let's try and accentuate this taper at the end. Pull it up, and this is going to be the bow. Pull those together. And then just bind them up here. This is going to work great. It's incredibly heavy, but I'm confident it won't sink. OK, we're floating a long way. Shows how buoyant these reeds are. I'll tell you what, it's a hell of a lot easier than doing battle with all of those reeds. OK, we're on our way. I knew you'd hear you 